Good morning everyone, Jason from Grey Path here and I'm wishing you a happy 2024. Um, apologies, my channel has been a bit quiet recently. I've had uh, health issues for the last few months which sadly are going to be culminating in an operation some point this year. So that means I've not been able to get into shelter building and getting deep into the wilderness with you guys like I'd hoped to give you a few basics. What I have been doing though is I've been in contact with quite a few other bushcrafters and not to be critical because I'm sure we could all critique each other's work but there have been a few mistakes that I've noticed other people making and you know whether it's a lack of knowledge and experience what have you I'm going to aim to try and rectify some of the things that I've seen first of all when you're heading out into the wilderness when you're going out doing camping I cannot stress enough the need for good intelligence and by that what I mean is you've got to know the land you've got to know your route you've got to know where water is where the nearest available aid is and what possible dangers there are we've got plenty of things at our disposal now whereby we don't actually physically need to go and recon we don't want, need to get mark one eyeball on anything but it does help there's nothing quite like being there and scouting things out beforehand we've got google earth we can zoom in on specific areas that we want and we can literally digitally get down into the guts of the area that we're going into we've got maps various other things at our disposal. What I have noticed is overconfidence. There was a couple of bushcrafters that put up videos recently. They thought they knew the lay of the land. They thought they knew what to expect and they ran into trouble. You know, one of them ran into some drug addicts. He didn't scout the land out beforehand to see if anything had changed. That's the overconfidence. I've been going to certain areas now for probably in excess of 30 years, okay? And I always check it out because there are inevitably going to be gaps between when you go to an area and when you go somewhere else. Things change, paths get overgrown, holes get dug. And an example I'll give you of that is we were doing some night camping, a group of four of us. And our overconfidence in our youth led to someone being quite badly injured. It, we were at night, we thought we knew the area. A fox or something had dug a hole. My friend found it. He was out for 14 weeks with ligament damage. Now, if you're deep in the wilderness and you're overconfident because you think you know the territory, you don't take into account the micro changes to the environment when we're not there. If you find yourself with a broken ankle in the middle of nowhere, you're in severe trouble. So never be overconfident, always do your recon. If you're planning on going somewhere and you're planning on spending a few days there, go and check it out the week before. Have a look around, make sure there's no one in the immediate area, there's no signs of other habitation, there's no signs of any drug addicts or homeless people. You know, there have been bushcrafters that have had their camps raided at night for their kit. I shit you not. So please, 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 good intelligence, good recon. Check things out before you go. Now, there are four things that I look for when I'm heading out into the wilderness. There are four considerations. Water, wood, wind, and widow makers. For those of you that don't know what widow makers are, let's take a look at some of these trees around us. Okay, there. Now you'll see that there's some dead wood on those trees. And if we combine that with wind, when we're thinking of pitching up a camp, they call them widow makers for a reason. Because if the wind blows those thick, heavy branches down, you're crushed to death. That's a widow maker, okay? Wood, as I've said, is there enough around to do what you need to do? Can you build a shelter? You've noticed probably on the videos that I do, I'm always looking around. I'm always taking in my surroundings. I'm noting where things are. It's the same with water. Know where your water is. 
okay so when you're looking around when you're using that intel you're scouting ahead of time you know where your wood is you know where your water is if you're going through alien territory not deep in space but territory you're not familiar with you might want to have some ranger beads you want to mark off the paces you know where the water is if you've gone past it you know where a big supply of wood is you don't need to strip your area bare especially if you're doing some stealth camping you don't want to make it obvious that you are there so always take into account your surroundings what you're walking past where these things are any significant landmarks water again this is something it's critical if you're planning on staying in an area yeah you're going to need access to clean water there are lots of ways to get it and i'm going to cover that in a later video but a critical mistake i saw a bushcrafter make recently was that she had seen a lovely area of river the river was down she camped on the river banks it rained in the mountains overnight and guess what happened the river came up swallowed her camp she was pretty lucky to get out of there with the speed and the height of the water as it came down so not only consider where you can get drinking water but consider the threats of water if I'm near a river, I will be 200 meters away from it and I will be on elevated ground if possible. That way, if there is a flash flood, you've got the time to pack up your kit. You've got the time to get safely out of there. So take that into consideration. Wind is another thing to take into consideration, not just with regards to widow makers, but also with regards to shelter. Again, something I saw a bushcrafter do recently was that they were on top of a hill and it was incredibly windy. They found an old stone structure, they strung their tarp up over the top. But the thing is, with wind, is it will go up the hill and it will go over the top of the hill. And they were right on the top of the hill. It got under their tarp, lifted it against the stone structure and shredded the tarp during the night. They were drenched, they had to cool things off. Okay? Wind and its relevance to your shelter and your safety cannot be overstated. What you want to try and do is if you're on a hill, you want to try and find somewhere over the other side of the hill. So if the wind's coming from this direction, imagine my head is the hill. Yeah, if the wind's coming up and over, you want to be this side of it. And you want to be about halfway up and use any available shelter that you possibly can, taking into account, of course, widow makers and such being around you. So it's all down with good intelligence, good experience, and the knowledge to do what you need to do safely. And that's what I'm trying to impart to you here. So remember, wood, water, wind, widow makers. Those are the four critical things you need to take into account when you're planning for shelter or you're planning an extended bushcrafting session away from home. Know your terrain, okay? And always be careful. Possibly to, if you're getting into late hours in the day, take with you a stick, probe the ground. If you can't see anything ahead, the stick will give you everything you need. Okay, if there's a hole in front of you that you wouldn't have otherwise noticed, the stick will tell you that the hole's there. You can then move around it. And I will be going through some night navigation as well at some point with you. And I look forward to expressing that knowledge directly to you and hopefully you'll find it useful and put it to good use in the future anyway remember those things wood water wind widow makers remember what i said about wind and water and good luck out there don't make the same mistakes other people did we can learn from those mistakes take good care friends see you soon